Hi, everybody. Welcome to my Dancing Eyes podcast, episode three. Today, I have on Lauren, whom I also met on uh, on Reddit. I'm just going to keep this pretty quick. If uh, I'm assuming if you're listening to this, you have nystagmus or you know somebody who has nystagmus. So if you'd be interested in coming on to the podcast and talking to me, feel free to let me know. You can also email me if you have any questions, anything like that. My email is going to be in the, in the description down below. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the Dancing Eyes podcast, episode three. This is uh, this is Lauren. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm excited to talk. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to you. We we were supposed to do this for. Well, we just like I've had a bunch of like my own reasons for like not being able to to do it. And I, I did like my first episode a few months ago. And then I, I had just recently moved and there was a bunch of just stuff, but I'm trying to do it more consistently now. So I'm happy that you're able to to come on and talk to me. Yeah, I'm happy you've moved and settled in. And um, I'm I'm excited to share my experience and continue to hear other people's on the podcast. So have you ever met anybody with nystagmus before? Um, I have not, not in an organic fashion. So my father's mother had nystagmus. Um, She passed when I was around 12. And growing up, I feel like I didn't really understand the eye condition. So I didn't think to ever talk to her about it. Um, So I also don't remember ever noticing her nystagmus. Um, But... I would say in like 2019, I found out that there was a group in America, I think it's called an American Nystagmus Network, and they have a conference um, every year, I think. And I went to that, and that was the first time I've met people with nystagmus. Which one did you go to? um, It was in Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. All right, sweet. In 2019, yeah, 2019, I think. Cool. And uh, yeah, that was my first time meeting people with nystagmus and also the first time I kind of understood how it affects me. And I think it's also interesting is I read like articles and they say nystagmus is pretty common, like one in 2000 people have it, but I I don't know why I've never met anyone with nystagmus. I'm, I'm with you on that. I see all these articles talking about how common it is and uh... And I've never met anybody with it either mm-hmm. uh, until I did this or un- until I uh, found the subreddit or the discord. There's a bunch of different groups online. And like you said, the American Nystagmus Network, but it, like I've never met anybody in person with it. Mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, maybe they're including people with like acquired nystagmus or nystagmus from conditions, other conditions that may come and go. So I don't know, but yeah, I sometimes lurk on the Reddit, but I, I deleted my Reddit a few years ago. So. I'm like, I'm on and off on Reddit. Sometimes I'll have an account. Sometimes I won't. It's just like, just yeah. depends. <laughs> so know. what was the conference a good experience? Because I've never been to it before, but I've been yeah, planning on it, it a few times. Great. Um, there were people of all ages. There were children to adults. Um, there's a leadership board of people who organized the conference and basically... They have like seminars all throughout the day for I think two to three days. And so there's panels with, um, I think they had a panel for teenagers, um, a panel for adults and children. They had, there were many like doctors there discussing um, like, what is it called? The genetics of nystagmus, um, how people with nystagmus read Um, learning to drive and learning about other accommodations that might be useful. So I think it'd be really useful for anyone with a child with nystagmus. My children, I mean, not my children, my parents learned a lot there actually. And um, yeah, there was a lot of, there was so much to learn. It was great. Cool. And they did it over a span of a few days, right? Or was it just a one day thing? It was over two days, two, two days and like a half day. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I hope they're doing one over the next, like, maybe next year, because I think I'd go to it. 
Mm-hmm. I think last year I was on Zoom. I didn't go um, because I forgot, but yeah, Can hopefully next one again. person. Yeah, there should be one. I think they do it every year. And yeah, I think so too. I would go back in person, yeah. Okay. So like on a, on a scale of one to 10, how much do you think, like how much would you say nystagmus has affected your day-to-day life? I feel like it affects everything in my life from like I but in from one to ten I would say the severity of my vision is about a three um it used to be a lot worse but eye surgery helps and and like learning how to like take care of myself helps but I feel like with nystagmus I do take care to make sure I get a certain amount of sleep every night unlike some of my peers like I don't I really do not like staying up late and I do not pull all nighters um, because my vision is so bad the next day and I get really bad headaches. Oh, Uh, so that's how much the sleep really affects your vision there. Yeah. And I also think of like when my blood, this sounds weird, but like when my blood sugar gets low, I feel like my vision is bad as well. And I thought I had like a metabolic condition, but I think it's just my vision. Um, which I think is weird, but that's how I feel. So I think I take care to go to sleep early-ish, kind of, mm-hmm. and get at least seven hours of sleep. Um, it affects how I walk around. Like, I mean, I'm naturally a fast walker, but if I walk too fast and I don't see like anything wrong with me, <laughs> which is kind of like interesting because I do drive, but I try to like, you know, like when you're looking for a building, I like never can find signs or Me neither. or like front doors and things. And it's like kind of, yeah, I've gotten used to like just being awkward and like asking all strangers for where things are all the time. I have mm-hmm. no more shame. <laughs> um, so I guess I visually, that, like it only really affects you, like, I guess a three. Yeah. It's not so, too bad. For an idea of my vision, I don't remember my prescription exactly, but my vision is just enough to pass the driving laws for the state I was, I got my license in. And so when I have glasses on, I don't have my glasses on right now. Um, Do you happen to drive at night? I can, I don't like to, I don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, yeah, I don't blame you. I, oh, you, you were telling me that you, you took your driving test and you passed it at 20. Is there a reason that you did it at 20 as opposed to 16? Because I was scared. <laughs> yeah. I think in high school, a lot of, my, I think all of my peers were like really ready to be driving. And I had a lot of worries about being dependent on like my parents and friends to drive me like for a long time. Um, but I think... I never like pushed myself to learn to drive, even though the eye doctor said I could drive because I just was scared. And it took a lot of driving lessons to get over that. Um, And I think I was an overthinker too, because I was like, if I ever get in a car accident and someone gets hurt, I will never forgive myself. But you know, I'm actually a pretty, you know, like as long as I drive the speed limit, I'm like, you you won't see me like speeding, but. Yeah. I found myself in a similar situation to you because I didn't take my test until I was 20 and I had to um, take a few driving lessons before the test. I took about three of them and um, the instructor told me that I was good to go and I would question her. I'd be like, are you sure? And she was like, "Uh, yeah, like you didn't hit anything. I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, And then I, I took the test and I passed it on the first try, but I still don't, I still don't drive kind of like like I do think about it a lot uh like what if I hit somebody I wouldn't be able to forgive myself and part of me just kind of wants uh like I I feel like technology is advancing really quickly with uh like self-driving uh vehicles and part of me just wants to wait for that but a part of me just also really wants that independence and just to get everywhere by myself too I think something did you disclose to your license, like driving person that you had an eye condition? Yeah, it was actually, I discussed it with her before I even signed up. 
for the driving test. I called them up and I told them everything. And I was like, do you guys think it's a good idea? And she was like, yeah, I had somebody pass the driving test a month ago who was missing an eye. I was like, uh, all right, cool. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess I'll do it then. Yeah, my sister has a friend who's like blind in her right eye that drives. And I'm like, that's great. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the first time I failed my first driving test, I, let's see, I did driving classes, I think like six hours of them. And then I went to the DMV for my test, but I like, I think I was scared of the driving instructor. And when I'm nervous, my vision gets worse. And so I think I like subconsciously failed myself. I didn't even make it out the parking lot <laughs> because I backed into a snowbank. But, and I think, yeah, so after that, I did not disclose my vision condition to driving instructors <laughs> because his reaction made me really nervous. Yeah. Um, and I think also with self-driving cars, I've heard of cars with like heads up displays and they're like, they'll display like the speedometer or I don't even know what it's called. Yeah, speedometer on the dashboard and lights, which I think would be useful because something I struggled with was like looking down or away from the, the front window to like look at meters and gauges and all that stuff. It's hard, right? I noticed that too. Yeah. So I think technology is going in a good direction. And hopefully I'll feel like I would still prefer not to drive, but I drive. Do you see the I, signs when you're driving? Because I don't see them. I don't. <laughs> don't no, me neither. Like, I don't <laughs> drive by signs. <laughs> yeah. I would, uh, my driving instructor, I was driving and she saw the sign and she was like, can you read that? And I said, no. And we got closer <laughs> and she was like, can you read it now? And I was like, no. Like, I can't, I can't read the signs until I'm pretty much right there or I'm right underneath them. I can see them, yeah, when they're right there or if I'm stopped. Yeah. I rely a lot on, like, navigation to tell where, like, roads intersect. <laughs> so, like, those little maps. Yeah. Um, Do you have, like, Siri talking to you? Yeah, and also, yeah, I, I had trouble seeing where intersection, like, finding driveways and intersections. I'll be, like, slowing down, like, a mile ahead <laughs> because if I don't have that available. So. <laughs> yeah, same here. You're actually yeah. the first person that I spoke to with nystagmus that drives because everybody else I've spoken to um, actually doesn't doesn't drive. Yeah, a lot of people do not drive. My grandma did not drive, but also she lived in a different time. Um, I yeah, I think my vision has come a long way. I've had two eye surgeries. Um, so what think, kind of surgeries did you have? Um, I had one when I was six years old and one when I was 12 and they were both the kind where they cut the eye muscle and shorten it because I had a really bad head tilt and I think I still do have a slight head tilt but I think it was so bad like I, it was like this like I could not look straight at yeah. all um so I had I had two surgeries for that and I think I had probably the exact same surgery or a very similar surgery when I was when I had just turned 13, where they're like cutting the eye muscle a little bit to, to help out your null point. Yeah. Cause my, my null point was really bad at one point. And I was, I was at the age where I didn't even really notice the null point. Like you don't really know that you have it until somebody brings it up. I feel. Um, I had plenty of that, <laughs> but yeah. um, think, we'll get into that. Yeah. I think, I'm glad that I also had surgeries while I was young because I think as an adult, eye surgeries take a lot more to recover from. I think all surgeries take more. I think they're harder to recover from and they hurt more, but otherwise, yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> so did your surgeries improve your vision at all or was it just your null point? Um, I think it my, uh, improved my vision as well. Um, uh, honestly, I'm not sure. I do not remember all my, my prescriptions and numbers. Yeah. And you, <laughs> but, you were young too, like you were six yeah. and you were 12. So it was, it was a while ago. But also I think just over time, my vision has gotten like a little bit better, even though I don't wear my glasses as much as I should. 
You drive with your glasses though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> but you, so I guess you function without your glasses. Like you're doing this without your glasses. I do. Yeah, I can see pretty, I would say pretty well without my glasses. That's why I say my vision is a three. But my right eye is a lot weaker than my left. So sometimes I just like don't see things on my right side. Oh, the total opposite for me, by the way. Like my right eye is my stronger eye mm-hmm. by, by a like, large margin. When I'm walking with friends, I don't like it when they stand on the right side. <laughs> I don't like it when anyone's on the right side. Um, and I walk into corners. <laughs> so that's funny. Yeah, that's like, yeah, I don't like it when people stand on my left side because I can't move my eyes to the left. Like it's a lot easier for me, to, for me to move my eyes to the right, but I can't, like if I want to move my eyes to the left, I got to move my whole my whole head. Yeah, and on my left, I feel like I have really good peripheral vision. So when yeah. I'm driving, my mom is screaming because like I don't turn my head when I look in the left mirror because my vision is so good on the left. Huh. And she's, I don't know, she, it really scares her and other driving instructors. I'm like, I looked, I looked very well. <laughs> um, and Are then people the- cautious to get in the car with you? Sorry? Are people cautious like to get in the car with you? Because I know people didn't want to drive with me when I was um, driving. Honestly, I don't, I just try not to drive people. <laughs> yeah. Like my parents, they get it. Um, if I drive anyone else, I'm like, do you want to drive? <laughs> I'm too, I'm insecure about it. I don't want anyone judging me. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Um, so earlier you were saying that when you, when you have lack of sleep, when you, you didn't sleep enough, your eyes, like your vision decreases. Is there anything else that, and you were even saying uh, like when you were anxious, your vision decreases, which like both of those same for me too. Is there, is there anything else that you noticed would decrease your vision? Like things that you avoid? Um, like when I do a lot of reading, uh, for example, I feel like I'm in college. Well, not, I'm in graduate school, but like, especially in college, adjusting to like the lecture format and looking up at a PowerPoint. I hate PowerPoints, but looking up at a PowerPoint Same. and then looking down at like my notes or a computer, like for an hour straight, my eyes would be so strained after um, a lot of textbook reading. The best thing I got were like these page magnifier things and um, But like, yeah, a lot of reading and like the reading like far away because things were not close. Um, What are the page magnifier things? They're like a magnifying sheet, like a little plastic sheet that you can order them from Amazon or anywhere. And you just hold them over the uh, like a page of a book and it makes all the text bigger. It's nice in like saving my eye strength (laughs) because honestly I'd be bright and fresh in the morning and then after one class I'd be so tired I actually I used to cope a lot with naps which was not healthy but that was the only way for me to get through the day because I was doing too much (laughs) yeah um I don't like naps I feel like I always I always wake up like really upset for some reason everything just bothers me (laughs) yeah like I'll go to sleep in a good mood and I'll wake up and everything just just really annoying <laughs> <laughs> I wake up happier <laughs> that's good um, but what else ruins my vision but if you can't think oh. of anything else that makes it worse we could kind of like discuss some things that make it better yeah um Naps, naps on my vision. There you go. <laughs> do you ever do any eye exercises? Oh, and wearing my glasses. <laughs> ah, so. um, but um, let's see. Do I do eye exercises? No, I did not know those existed until recently, actually, because I was at a physical therapist for another injury, and she was like, you are so crooked. <laughs> she, I, I think she was thinking like, because I, I think I do have a slight head tilt still, so like I have tension all like on my side. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "You're so crooked." I was like, "I'm sorry," <laughs> but I, um, but like, apparently there are eye exercises, and I would like to like start doing some for the right side. And um, I don't know. 
I think sometimes putting like cold things on your eyes helps. A yeah. Bit. All right. I got to try that then. Mm-hmm. That's something. Um, uh, what age were you when you realized that your eyes were, were different? Um, and what, you know, like what made you realize that? Yeah. What age? I think, I think throughout middle school and throughout middle school and elementary school, I did like, I was made fun of a bit and I didn't understand why. Um, and then in high school, I, I understood why, but I didn't know how to explain it to anyone. And I also just didn't want to tell anyone that I had an eye condition. So I would say I acted like I didn't, I had a little like self revelation. I think after I went to that conference in 2019 and I started understanding nystagmus and how it affects me. But yeah, so the age where I realized my eyes were different, I would say I was around like 10 or 11. I had such a negative experience with one teacher that like traumatized me. I still remember this in my mind. But like, I was just sitting in class, like probably looking at him with, like, with my head crooked. And he was like, why are you looking at me like that? And it's not what he said, it was like how he said it. And everyone like turned and looked at me, I remember it. <laughs> but um, Gotta love those teachers. It's just like, it catches me so off guard when like, that's the first thing out of people's mouth. Like, what, why are you looking like that? Because I don't think anything of it. And my family doesn't think anything of it. And my close friends don't either. Yeah. So I think- I've gotten a few of those too. I've had people go to me and be like, why do you look like that? And I don't know how to respond. Like, is it, are you talking about like, how do I look physically or like, how, how am I looking? Like how am I, I know, right? <laughs> is it the way I'm looking at you or is it the way that I appear? Like, I don't know what yeah. that question means. Honestly, and it makes me shut down a little bit. I'm like, well, you're so rude. I don't owe you an explanation. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. how I feel nowadays. <laughs> like, Same. I'm not talking to you and that's that. But it's not even worth my time. Yeah, it's not. Um, and I think that's a, it's okay to feel that way. But as a kid, it caught me off guard because I didn't understand myself that my vision was different because my parents didn't. I feel like my parents never explained to me really that it, I had an eye condition. I knew I had an eye, like they know, and I had surgery, but nothing. So do you happened. think that's a good thing or a bad thing? I think it was hmm. I think it worked out fine (laughs) I think so in the classroom you know they would just tell the teachers Lauren needs to sit in the front Um, but I probably needed longer time on exams and tests because in high school like my grades got so bad in calculus and chemistry because all my numbers would be like jumbled up. Like I read numbers wrong a lot of the time. And Same. especially in a testing setting. And I would, I mean, like what I'm telling you, I, I did so poorly <laughs> in chemistry and calculus, but I had an excellent chemistry teacher. So that, I had a positive experience anyway. But I think... My parents, I turned out fine. Whether they told me, you know, told me how to explain my eye condition or not, I'm fine. Um, And you you see a range of of parents and how they treat their kids, and it can be really um, harmful to the to the kid. I think if the parent is raising them like they have a disability and like there's something really wrong with them, and I see a lot of parents who don't really know how they're supposed to be raising their kids. And they'll ask people with nystagmus, like, what is the, you know, how should I go about this? And how big of a deal is nystagmus? Because I see a lot of concerned parents and they think that it's a really big deal that their kid was diagnosed with this. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's it's good to kind of, because I know that there's a couple who, who actually watch these. So it's good to kind of like mm-hmm. explain what works better for us I would say 
the scariest thing I realized this halfway through college was I felt when I understood nystagmus, I felt suddenly super limited in what I could do in my career um, because I originally wanted to be a veterinary surgeon. And I was like, how can you be a surgeon when your vision's a liability? And I felt like, oh my goodness, like I have no direction in life all of a sudden. And I actually like, I went to therapy because I was like, I felt like sad that I didn't, I, I felt limited. I don't like even knowing I have a limitation that I like, I didn't like knowing that I couldn't be an astronaut, even if I wanted to be an astronaut. Mm-hmm. But like, you never, I think one of the requirements is you need like 2020 vision, but you never know if you can still, you, you may still be able to go to space with bad vision, especially in the coming years. So I think, you know, really when it comes to raising your kids, I mean, I don't have any kids, so I don't know what to say about raising kids, but I think the most important thing is to not limit yourself before you try something, never. And I'm glad my parents never like kept me from doing certain sports because of my vision. Same. Yeah, my mom never uh, really treated me like, like I have a twin sister and she never treated me like I was any different because of the condition. She was always there for me to talk to. Like mm-hmm. if I ever needed like someone to talk to, if I needed advice, um, yeah. she was always there to talk to, but she didn't raise me like there was anything wrong with me. She let me do any sports I wanted to do. And I think that that's really important for, um, for parents to know that this isn't crippling. And yeah. That, and that your child can still do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And like we and like with a vision impairment, you do things differently. And that's actually really great. And it makes people very innovative. So definitely like any disability, I think, is something to to learn from. And it's a it's a good thing, in my opinion. So what kind of sports did you play when you were younger? Well, I wish I could say I played like a hand-eye coordination sport, but that's not true. <laughs> I rode horses. Um, I was one of those people who loved horses okay, (laughs) and I still am, but I think horseback riding helped me develop a sense of like motion and depth perception because you're moving obviously faster than if you were walking or running. Um, And so, yeah, that's what I do. And I enjoy that. I remember like, this is not to discourage anyone, but I could never do basketball or like baseball and gym. I didn't even try to hit the ball. (laughs) I wasn't. Yeah. And I, did you play any sports? I I played like a bunch of sports, honestly. And I was like, I was relatively good too. Um, I know something that doesn't even really make sense, but it's true is that table tennis, like ping pong, I'm stupid good at I'm I'm really good at that game, and um, I noticed that my hand-eye coordination is is pretty good. Like I can play football, I can play basketball. That's great. I'm not saying like I'm good, but I'm like average. You know, like I don't get held back by my mm-hmm. eyes. I even uh, in the subreddit I asked. This was like a year ago. I asked anybody if if they were really good at any sports that would be surprising, and th- there were a couple in there. I, don't, I think what somebody was good at darts, maybe I can't remember. So, um, so yeah, I feel like it's a 50 50 on whether or not, um, like we can play sports cause some people can't and some people can. And it's also the same with the driving. Like some people can and some people can't. And I think it definitely depends on the severity, but yeah, I think it's great that you can have eye hand eye coordination. You probably developed it young. Um, well, I didn't even like see this goes back to the parenting too. Like I was never brought up like with the idea that there was anything wrong or anything different with my eyes. So I did everything that all of my peers were doing and maybe I did them a little differently or I did them with the head tilt, but at the end of the day, I, I still did them. And uh, yeah. So like when it came to sports, like all my friends were playing sports and I would play sports too. And I was just as good, if not better than, than most of them. Yeah. So Yeah. That just, I feel like part of that just goes back to the parenting 
and just yeah. like don't don't raise your kid like they have a disability because they're capable of doing a lot more than like you would be surprised how much they're capable of doing mm-hmm. yes definitely <clears throat> and i actually i was i read an article the other day it was like a scientific study about children with infantile nystagmus have trouble with like target based hand motion or something i don't know what that means but i was thinking about this earlier because i work in a in a lab and sometimes i have to like i work with animals so sometimes i have to pick up like a mouse and like i struggle to do it quickly i don't know what it is but i feel like i need to practice that to be able to like connect my my hand with what i'm trying to do which i think is interesting I just discovered that the other day what do you mean so like you have to pick up the mouse a certain way um so that you can give them an injection um it's called scruffing you know like how like puppies have that like extra fat behind their head Uh uh-huh yeah you do the same thing for a mouse and like so you have to like adjust your hand a certain way so that you can pick them up securely and my, like, I find my fingers are, like, slow to respond, um, which is alarming. But I think I just need practice. <laughs> <laughs> is that related I, to the nystagmus or is that something else? I think it might be because I find, like, picking things up. Sometimes I just, like, put my hand in the wrong spot. Or maybe I just... I'll do that, too. I'll do maybe that too. I just am just that way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I maybe. don't know. Yeah, but I find myself doing that as well. Like, I'm bad with, like, like depth perception is not my thing. Yeah, that might be it. It might be a depth perception thing. That's one of the reasons that I struggle with driving. Like, I can do it. I can drive. But it's just hard for me to tell how far away some things are. Like, if if I'm making a turn, I can't tell how far away that car is sometimes that's coming. I hit so many curves (laughs) because I got the hard curve. And... I slow before the intersection, like before, like a stoplight by a lot. Um, Same. But it's fine. It's just safe driving, okay? <laughs> yeah, you, you're actually trained to do that in your driving courses, too. Exactly. To be, I um, keep, yeah. To be like extra, th- 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 there's a word for it. It's like a certain type of driving, like defensive driving. So yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. This, she, that was being preached about defensive driving. Yes. um dude what's the deal what's the deal with alarm clocks alarms (laughs) um i feel like every person that i talk to who has nystagmus will tell me like an alarm clock story about how like the numbers are always moving around and i just feel like i just feel like they always bring it up the numbers are moving yeah like you've never you've never been in like in a dark room and then oh it's just like bright lights and then they're oh yeah yeah (laughs) yeah um yes definitely everyone i talk to always brings up the alarm clocks and i'm like yes like i have the same experience with alarm clocks i never thought about it (laughs) i thought it was like maybe one of those things just just because it's dark in here (laughs) i used to think that things just shook like i used to think that that if I was in a dark room and there was a light and it was just moving around, I used to think that that's just how it was. And that's how everybody saw it. <laughs> oh, no. And, and, and I'm come to find out that's just because I have nystagmus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I think I like hallucinate that things are moving. <laughs> like there's like, I have my grandma's house has a ring holder and it's like a hand. It's got, when I was a kid, it was really creepy. And sometimes I think I saw that thing move. That Maybe you did, did. You, know. you know. Honestly, her house is creepy. <laughs> so there you go. It's possible then. Anything's yeah. possible at that point. Um, what else do I got here? Do you, do you ever you're, like you're ever in a, in a conversation with somebody and your eyes are kind of acting like relatively normal, and then all of a sudden they just start going crazy, and then you have to like yes. hold off on the convo. Um, I feel like sometimes one, if like someone like rounds a corner and surprises me when I'm surprised, I feel like all of a sudden I can't see anything. Yeah. (laughs) Um, and also 
I think this might've affected me socially a lot, but when my eyes are not doing well, I think I just avoid looking at people. I avoid eye contact in general. Same. And I think growing up, I was very shy, partially because I could not look people in the eye comfortably or like straight. So I think sometimes I revert to that even now, like just not like, not talking to like looking at people when I talk to them. Yeah. I'll do that too, especially if they're going crazy and I don't, cause I it's hard. It. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. And then also, I don't know like how much that distracts the person that I'm talking to. Cause like, first of all, it's very distracting to me when I'm trying to talk to somebody and my eyes are going crazy. So I already know that's very distracting to me. And I can't even focus on the conversation at that point. Cause now I'm a bit worried about my eyes freaking out. And then And then the person across from me is probably trying to focus on the conversation too. And then they're seeing my eyes going crazy and they're like, 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 what is this? So I don't know how much it affects them too. It's interesting. Like certain people's reactions, because um, I like disclose to my boss or whatever that like, I have an eye condition and she was like, Oh, I just thought you were very engaging because I guess like eye movement is engaging. Um, other people, I, like I said before, some people are just rude and are like, what is wrong with you? Like, or like, are you drunk or are you high? Yeah. It's very rude to me. Um, and other people are, I like it. I get a lot of like, are you okay? You know, like a very concerning, are you okay? <laughs> it was like, yeah. I've gotten that a bunch as well. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> it's a, it's always the are you okay's or the like are you high right now? I get a it's lot like, of that as well. I used why? to, not not so much anymore. Yeah, I'm like, why do you think I'd be under the influence? So co- come to find out, that's actually one of the things that cops pull when they pull people over and they're testing to see if they're drunk. They t- they test for nystagmus. I'm scared of that. Yeah, um, I'm worried. I keep telling myself, I have this letter from my eye doctor saying that I have nystagmus and I keep meaning to like have that in the car printed out in case I'm pulled over because I don't think, I don't know if they'd believe me if I told them. Um, I think um, I have had one medical professional outside of an eye doctor like understand what nystagmus is and it was a paramedic because apparently um, nystagmus is a sign of stroke so they rec- they thought they like asked me if i had nystagmus and i was like oh, oh my god you're the first person to ever know what that is <laughs> <laughs> i've had nurses be like that i've had nurses ask me if i've had nystagmus that's about it though like not really like doctors will be confused sometimes i know dentists don't know about it Um, I, the the last uh, person that I had on the podcast said that they've never had a, a doctor or a paramedic or or a nurse or anybody know what the nystagmus is. Like they've never brought it up, which was a little surprising to me because I think I feel like like they have to be taught about that in school. Like I know they get taught about that, so either they just forgot because it was so long ago or or something. Yeah, because it is something that does. I think it is apparent with other conditions like stroke and and multiple sclerosis and other things. Um, yeah. So I'm surprised. <laughs> Do you ever like wear sunglasses? Like, uh, like indoors? I don't, just because I find the rims always block my vision a little too much. Yeah. But also- What if they're wide? What if they're like big sunglasses? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I feel like I only do it if like to be fair I only do it if I'm really tired I do it so rarely but if I'm really tired or like if my eyes are just having a bad day like I'll do it occasionally Mm -hmm. I yeah I I just deal with how tired I look (laughs) yeah um and let people wonder but yeah so I think some people wear the sunglasses for photosensitivity but I'm not photosensitive so Am I photosensitive? I don't even know. Might be. Probably. <laughs> um, I don't. Do you, Do you have Do you struggle with like seeing people's faces? 
I so that's, that's a big thing. And I always feel bad when I don't recognize people. A lot of the times yes. I feel like people think that I'm antisocial or I don't like them because I don't say hi to them or I don't see them or they think I'm avoiding them. But in mm. reality, I don't see them. <laughs> Same. And so often, I mean, I've gotten used to just saying hi to random people and like not having their face right. But I think, you know, yeah, I think. It makes me really bad with names too. Like, it mm-hmm. takes me a long time to get somebody's name down. Cause like, like, honestly, like everybody looks the same to me from a distance. And with masks on, that makes it difficult as well. Yes. Yeah. The masks don't help either. To be honest, I can't see your eyes. They're too small. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like, I try to remember people's heights. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> Otherwise, I hope I get your name right. <laughs> I don't know anybody's eyes, co- like eye colors either. Like, wh- oh, like what you I said, the eyes are too small. I can't see them. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be like, I have to stare at you for a good like minute to figure it out. So <laughs> awkward. I have to stare at you for a good minute to figure out who you are. Like Honestly. let alone the eye color. Like Honestly. I've had people come to me and say, hi, Frankie. And I'm just like, hey. And hey, say, yeah, I'm the person do you know who, just who I am? Hi. <laughs> I don't say your name. I just say hello. <laughs> yeah, it's like hey, dude, or hey, hey, buddy. Like, I, I don't know your name half the time. It's not because I don't like you. It's because I can't see you. Pe- yeah. People take it personally. And so many times when people you say like I can't see or I have an eye condition, they're like, well, at least for me because I'm not wearing my glasses. <laughs> they're like, is it fixable with glasses? Like, why don't your glasses fix it? I'm like, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I get a lot of that where I can't see something and I, I'll be wearing my glasses and I can't see something and somebody will be like, well, you're wearing glasses. Why can't you see it? I'm just like, like, dude, it's, it, there's more to it than that. It's not that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Especially nowadays. Like, I don't wear glasses anymore because mm-hmm. I've got, I've had LASIK a few months ago. So um, that's cool. I, I get concerned that like if somebody sees me holding, cause I still hold things close. Like I still, I only see as well as I saw with my glasses. So it's not like my vision is better than it was with my glasses. So I still have to hold things pretty close. And, um, and I've had people say like, you should get glasses. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like, this is what I am with my glasses. Yeah, <laughs> They're not going to help me. Do you feel like, how well do you think the LASIK helped you? Or like, why, why did you get LASIK? I got it because I hate contact lenses because people, they always prescribe me the gas permeable lenses, like the hard lenses and they're super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I've worn glasses my whole life and I was kind of over them. And I, I came across just somebody where I lived and they said that, that they could try to do it. And and yeah, I mean, it worked out. Like, I don't have to wear glasses anymore. I feel like I might have to get a pair of reading glasses, though. I think it would make reading a bit easier for me. But I still I still function day to day very well without the glasses, which is pretty cool. It's cool that they were able to do that. Because I thought I couldn't get LASIK because my eyes are, like, moving. You can, <laughs> you can. It just depends. Because I've been turned down for LASIK before, too. Mm-hmm. I got turned down in Florida. And you kind of just have to find somebody who's willing to work with a nystagmus. And the the person that I went to had done it with somebody with nystagmus before. So I wasn't the first nystagmus patient, which is how I found out about them because this person had recommended it. Um, It might've been on the subreddit actually. And uh, I remember my eyes were super bruised after the procedure for like four weeks, maybe a month because they had to apply they had to apply a lot of pressure on there to help stabilize them and keep them from moving. And uh, yeah, the procedure wasn't fun. (laughs) Like it wasn't a, it wasn't a fun time, but it was, it was pretty short. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were super red for, for a while. But uh, I I think it was, I think it was worth it. (laughs) What's that? That sounds like a long recovery. (laughs) Yeah, well, they didn't hurt, you know, like my eyes were never in pain after the procedure. During the procedure, it was a little uncomfortable, but it never hurt. And um, I just had to deal with the aesthetic of my eyes looking more wonky than usual for about a month. 
and then they, they went back to normal eventually. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, I don't really, I'm looking through my notes here to see if I have anything else. D- do you have anything? Um, I think I'm trying to get better with, uh, with writing, like talking points. I have probably like 10 of them, but I think we went through all of them. I'm trying to think about like other ways it has effects. I think I talked about most of it. Just like some stories, maybe like some childhood stories or, uh, I feel like I definitely, I did have people bully me by taking my glasses and being like, why can't you see, why can't you see the boy? Like, why don't you move your face, like your, your head to read instead of your eyes? And yes. Like, yeah. And um, I didn't talk, I don't like bullying. Well, I stood up for bullies for other people, but I just kind of took it when other people bullied me. Same. Um, That wasn't fun. And I even had someone pick on me in high school. Like we're like, old like why are you still picking that's where it started for me really was was like a freshman in high school middle school really wasn't so bad middle school i feel like it was mostly like behind your back stuff but in high school like they like went to my face and and started talking i would have i would have a group of people who were my quote-unquote friends they were really just like acquaintances at school um and I, they would always be like, like, hey, Frankie, like as they were like, like approaching me and just like looking totally off in, into like space. Oh, and well, they thought that that was hilarious. That's not okay. Yeah. I, that that I, really, that stuff really affected me. It was, it was like that for, for a few months and it was a few people too. And they would always, they would laugh so hard. Like they would think it was the funniest thing. Like, I don't know what it was like a group mentality because when if if it was just one person by themselves they wouldn't do it but when there's a group of people they yeah, want to make their buddies laugh and I think also it they might be uncomfortable with it for some reason I think a lot of people are just insecure in high school in general that's so that's why I deal with a lot of bully pe- people like they're just they have a problem with you and it's not my problem or your problem um even one of, one of the people, the worst person actually, texted me a couple months ago and apologized about it, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So that that's just goes to show it really is just like, it's a high school thing, really. Like people are insecure and then they bring it out on other people and then they get over it and then they don't feel the same way. And I think about other people who are made fun of like in high school and middle school. And I think also having a stagnus, which for me was kind of an invisible disability kind of thing I feel like I learned a lot of empathy for people like you really never know what anyone has or is going through um so it's important to just keep that in mind every time you talk to people (laughs) um yeah do you have any other like positives that you think nystagmus has brought to you I think the empathy is a good one empathy I think it's made me really adaptable to a lot of situations. I become very crafty with how to get things done when I'm super tired. Um, Adapting to situations and like resiliency with social situations and just unfortunately, like, yes, there were bad, like I've had a lot of negative social interactions, but you learn from them um, and they help you become a better communicator um, and better understand the world and and how to better communicate with people and I think I had another bad friendship story where actually recent um well I don't want to talk about on a negative note but I had this girl who I was friends with for a long time but whenever she introduced me to a new friend she would start talking like we'd go out to dinner and she'd start talking about my nystagmus um in a really ugly manner like she would say like well she would pretend like she didn't know i had it and then tell her friend about it 
and be like, why are your eyes moving? Or like, you look like a chameleon. Or like, you look like a chameleon. And those things were very hurtful toward me. Um, So she just, she pretended that she didn't know that you had the condition. Yeah, she would blindside me. I was so like taken back. And like, I think nystagmus, honestly, it's a great, unfortunately, like it's a good way to screen out certain people. (laughs) Um, It is, right? Like I, I agree. quality people don't care. <laughs> um, so I think nystagmus is a is a something that has taught me a lot in my short twenty two years on on the earth. <laughs> oh, twenty two. Okay, I'm twenty one. We're pretty much right there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. The, the, there's like a good group of like like range of people that I'm, I've been talking to. There's even there's some people on the Discord. I don't know if you if you've ever been on the Discord that I'm trying to get on here, but like it's they're I'm trying to get them on here. We'll see, we'll What's see if it age? happens. Like, they're like like because there's people on the Discord. I think they're like like 15 or 16. So they're the age that I was when yeah. I was really struggling with it, and they're going onto the Discord talking about like their experiences and um asking for advice and you know i'll, I'll give my advice on, online like i'll write paragraphs and stuff yeah. Th- there's a lot of good stuff on there but that was one of the main reasons why i made this because i thought that when i was that age that something like this would have been a good source of like information or just yeah, like hearing other people who who have it that are going to say like it's okay like it, it might be bad now, but it's not going to be that bad in the future. Like people get better, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm trying to get, trying to see if any of them will come on. We'll see. Yeah. And like, also I would say when I was, when I was around that age, I wish I had like understood nystagmus. Like I would say it's important to have like a one sentence explanation of your eye condition. Um, That's a case, good idea. Like, someone respectfully like asks you like about your eyes you can explain it really simply and easily i find that it's better to kind of knock that out when you're first starting a relationship it's it's easier to um to be more open with a person like if they don't bring it up which oftentimes they won't bring it up i'll say hey by the way like you might have noticed my eyes they're acting a little a little funky and then i'll explain it to them and then i'll it feels like there's a weight that's lifted off of my chest and then I can, yeah. I can be a lot more free with them. I, I get, I understand that as well. Um, that's how I feel because when I developed new friends in, in college, I was like, Hey, I can't see in the dark. So I need you to walk with me. <laughs> um, and I'd explain my eye condition. Um, and that's really helpful in school and in, in all kinds of friendships and relationships. So do you see yourself bringing it up oftentimes, like when you first meet somebody or do you, does, yeah. does it just come up? I think I went through a phase where I was very open about it because I was scared of people wondering about it and making assumptions about me. So yeah, like when I would um, make new friends, that was only, let me think. Yeah, so like in graduate school, I just met new people. I told them I have an eye condition. Um, when I met people for like a date, like I've told them I have an eye condition before I like even see them in person. Um, that's about it. Like I just, you know, no one in my family asked me about it, but. Yeah. So, I, I mean, think- there's something like as far as the dating goes because i'll do the same thing like i'll say something um beforehand if it like if it's like an online thing yeah so like if you're using an online dating site you'll tell them beforehand um actually i've told some people beforehand and some people i did not tell i think it just depends on if i fit it in the conversation Mm -hmm. um but i'm pretty open about it yeah, I'm pretty open about it. I'm very open. I tell people very quickly. I have a vision condition. 
I think that's a good idea. It just like eliminates the elephant in the room. And the elephant, the elephant might not be as big to the other people as it is to me. Um, like I'll have people where I haven't brought it up ever. And then like a few months, they'll be like, oh yeah, I noticed that like within the first few minutes and then I just forgot about it. And then just that's who yeah. you are. And uh, that's pretty much like all of my friendships at this point. We, like yeah. all, my, all of my good friendships, we knocked that out pretty early. I find a lot of people, yeah, they don't think of it much at all. It's not a big deal. No. Um, which is nice because there's plenty of experiences where it is a big deal to people. So it's good to have those positive experiences. Yeah. Well, I, I hope they release those dates for the, for the conference um, yeah. for 2022 because I think I'd go to it this year. Yeah. And I can meet more people in person with a stagmus. Maybe other people from the podcast will come. Yeah, hopefully. Exciting. Yeah, um, I don't really have anything else here to say. Do you have anything that you'd want to discuss? Mm. I think I've said everything. Okay, well, I could just end it here then. Okay, thanks for having me. (laughs) Thank you for coming on. All right. Uh, well, thank you for anybody who made it this far, like listening this far. That'd be cool if you did. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So I'm going to stop the recording here.